state annotation using spectral learning. Okay. Okay. Um, thanks very much. I'm Kevin Chen, and I'm going to tell you about some work I did with my ex postdoc, Jimin Song. And the second part of this is also going to be joint work with two computer scientists at UC San Diego, Kamalka Choudhury and Chi Cheng Zhang. So I have a very simple goal today, which is to tell you about our software program, Spectacle, and its follow-up called Spectacle Tree. And the goal is to try to get most more of you interested in trying out our software, if you're more interested in the computation aspects of this, or if uh, you're more interested in the molecular biology aspects to look at our annotations of the ENCODE data, all of which is uh, available from my webpage. Okay, so the problem we're trying to solve is uh, the same one, essentially, as what uh, is solved by uh, programs such as uh, Chrome HMM and Segway, which you may be familiar with. So for each cell type, you're given a bunch of tracks, which, you're sh which is shown here in the vertical axis, and uh, you get a bunch of, uh, for, in for, for instance, uh, histone modification marks, and the genome is shown across <laughs> in the horizontal axis. And what you're asked to do in this problem is to return a coloring of the genome or a uh, segmentation of the genome into different what's called chromatin states, uh, as you see in the first row. Uh, red, yellow, gray, and so on, and each of those chromatin states is supposed to correspond to some kind of functional biological domain, such as an enhancer or a promoter. So that's the problem, <coughs> and at the technical level or mathematical level, the tool that's really uh, been uh, used over and over again in the literature is something called the hidden Markov model, and we're doing that as well. Um, so what I'll tell you about quickly is our software, which is called Spectacle, um, and that's for analyzing one uh, cell type or one tissue type if you're looking at, for, for instance, the roadmap um, epigenomics data. Uh, that's um, work we published last year in genome biology. And then uh, some follow-up work where we were able to actually extend this into the analysis, uh, joint analysis of multiple cell types which are related. So if you have multiple tissues which are all related by some developmental time course, for instance. Um, we published that in NIPS, which is actually a machine learning conference, but we're, you know, trying to put, it, uh, put this into the biological context as well and have that in review. So the main idea at a completely technical level, and this is my only um, uh, sentence about computer science in this, uh, in this talk, is going to be this one, that uh, most methods in uh, computational biology use something called the expectation maximization and work in the maximum likelihood framework that's typically slow and it typically only finds a local optimum of um, in the solution space, and so we use something which is very novel and, um, and uh, just emerging in the theoretical machine learning literature called spectral learning, and that's something uh, which if anybody is interested in the technical details, I'd be very happy to talk to you about after this. So <coughs> I'll just tell you about our results today. Our software, in case you're interested in actually running it, is about 100 times faster at learning the model than Chrome HMM, and I'll tell you the implications of that. It's not just so that um, your analysis goes faster, but we can actually do more types of interesting biological analysis by having a faster method. <coughs> so we can look at the accuracy of the solutions produced. This is a um, depiction of the um, uh, solved chromatin states. So each, of each line here, each of the 20 states is supposed to represent a chromatin state, just such as an enhancer or a promoter or something like that. On the left, you see our solution. On the right, you see the Chrome HMM solution. For comparison, um, you see that they're pretty similar, and I think that's good because that shows we're not uh, completely off the deep end here. But what I'd like to draw to your attention to is uh, the one which is shown in the box, which is uh, chromatin state 20, and that's where we've learned something interesting. You can see here this high K4 monomethylation, low K4 trimethylation, has K high K27 acetylation, so we recognize this is a good enhancer state. And for comparison in the chrome HMM solution, we see what actually looks like a null state where you have low, exp um, low uh, uh, values in all of the chromatin marks. And we see this repeatedly in <coughs> many, many different cell types, um, essentially all the ones we've looked at, where um, you see many um, null states, uh, in this case in chrome H HMM state 20, 15, and 1. Right, so this is uh, something that in machine learning is a known phenomenon. It uh, has to do with um, overfitting to the background, um, and it's something that's solved by our method. Here's a uh, follow-up piece of data which shows that this actually gives you biologically relevant um, uh, results, um, and we, we're switching here now to disease uh, SNP enrichment, 
which is shown now by having a deeper red color. So hot, the redder you are in this picture, uh, the better you are. Each column now is the um, is a disease SNP enhancement for some particular disease, which is relevant to this cell type, which happens to be an immune cell type. Um, the ordering of the states is the same. Spectacle is on the left, chromatin is on the right, and you see here that chromatin state 20, which is the enhancer which we found, <coughs> which was not found by chrome-HMM, is actually the one which has the highest enrichment over all states. I would like to stress that, not comparing to the other state 20 in chrome-HMM, but compared to all states in chrome-HMM, um, the one with the highest uh, disease gene enrichment, or disease SNP enrichment, sorry, uh, is, uh, is this new enhancer state. Okay, so that's one <coughs> example. Let me switch now to telling you about our uh, follow-up, which is called Spectacle Tree. And the, the main thing here is that we're now able to, uh, for the first time, very efficiently um, analyze uh, multiple cell types together. So let me just explain this model quickly. The important thing here is, oh, I'm so, sorry, is there a pointer? Okay, so the important thing here is the tree of three things. Is there a pointer? Yes. It's okay. Is, th is these three things here, and that's supposed to be three different uh, cell or tissue types, and the tree is supposed to represent something like the developmental lineage. So if you have, for, for instance, something very simple in roadmap could be fetal brain and two adult brain regions, and I'm showing you here just a developmental lineage of three tissue or cell types, but this can be done for uh, as many cell types or as many tissues as you have. <coughs> and then over here on the horizontal axis is the regular hidden Markov model, so this is depicting all the positions on the genome. So this is the same model as before, um, it's just that now you're allowed to have um, a large number of tissue types which you jointly analyze. So our machine learning paper is about how to solve this model in a spectral way, and we have done that very efficiently. I'll just tell you the results again. They're, they take the same form as uh, for the single cell type case. We're faster. Um, we find much more biologically significant states as opposed to the back row null chromatin states. We have higher prediction accuracy in terms of uh, precision recall accuracy on known biological states. And um, I see I'm running out of time, so let me just uh, make the point. <coughs> Clearly, that uh, if you are going to use something like Comitum or Segway, I would encourage you to take a look at our software and our annotations, and they're both available on my webpage. And please email me if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Thanks.